A couple of weeks back we laid our hands on the ROG Strix K3 and while we were fairly impressed by its 240Hz display, the laptop isn't exactly aimed towards a casual gamer with its over the top specifications and price tag and that's where today's contender comes in. Meet the ROG Strix G edition. This laptop aims to give you gaming laptop-esque feel without breaking the bank. This is Sandy from Rev Atlas and you're watching the review of the Asus ROG Strix G edition G531 GT. The build quality of the ROG Strix G feels very rugged. The entire body of the laptop is constructed out of hard polycarbonate material including the outer lid and the way that Asus has chosen to design it with the brush matte finish and straight up sharp lines lends it a very premium yet gamery aesthetic. Even though the design is very understatedly matte, the laptop will definitely turn some heads thanks to a glossy ROG logo on the outside and although it doesn't light up like the one on the SCAR 3, it is without a doubt eye-catching. There's minimal flex on the keyboard deck which reaffirms our confidence in its solid build quality. The hinge feels solid as well as we found non-existent wobble when typing on the keyboard and it allows for a decent 135 degree tilt and stays stable thanks to incredibly solid base. The bezels on the laptop are quite thin on the three sides except for the bottom which has a substantial amount of wasted space. Here's where we would have liked to have seen a 16 to 10 display instead of the traditional 16 to 9 aspect ratio 1. The laptop lacks any sort of camera which is to be noted and Asus doesn't provide any such other accessory in the box either. Speaking of accessories, there aren't any in the box apart from a good looking 150 watt charging brick with a regular barrel style connector. Asus has also provided what looks like a ribbon cable and screws to mount a 2.5 inch drive inside the laptop since our review unit didn't come with one on board. The laptop comes with the NVMe SSD pre-installed and our unit came with the Intel 660p SSD with a 512GB capacity. It's a fairly fast SSD but far from top of the line. The display is a similar story as well, it's a middle of the pack 60Hz IPS panel sourced from LG and the exact model number being LP156WFC-SPD1. The display is good enough for indoor use, especially in a dark to moderately lit environments but not bright enough to be used in well lit conditions and definitely not outdoors under direct sunlight. The matte coating on the display helps reduce glare to a fair extent but can't compensate for the low brightness. The colors look vivid on the 8-bit panel and the blacks look fairly average for an IPS panel too. Asus has bundled a program for tweaking the colors and white balance according to your liking. It's called the ROG Game Visual and offers multiple presets to choose from. The laptop display is about average and will just get the job done and anybody that's looking for more should look elsewhere. Asus has gone for a more gamer friendly keyboard here omitting the number pad entirely in favour of big spacious keys and many will be happy with the trade off. There are also dedicated multimedia buttons for volume up or down, mic on and off, fan speed and ROG armory crate. Coming to your keys themselves they have a fair amount of travel but feel slightly mushy lacking a satisfying click to them which depends on your preference since the keys are almost silent. Some may prefer that and the keys also have a soft touch finish which also helps in keeping your fingers well gripped for a faster typing experience. The keyboard uses a single zone RGB lighting as a backlight and has three brightness levels. The Asus Aura software gives you the ability to customize the lighting effects to your liking. The trackpad on the other hand is well sized with the dedicated right and left click buttons and works reliably with a smooth gliding surface and accurate tracking thanks to windows precision drivers and gestures work well as well. All in all, the keyboard and trackpad are good enough for a gaming laptop and you'll be hard pressed to find anything better in this segment. The 6G features 3 USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports on the left alongside a 3.5mm audio jack combo and on the back you'll find a power in HDMI 2.0B and Gigabit Ethernet port. The lack of a USB Type-C, USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and card reader is a missed opportunity for Asus on an otherwise solid offering. When it comes to upgradability, the 6G scores well. There are two sodium slots present on the motherboard with only one populator out of the box so you can configure it with up to 32GB of maximum memory in the future. The M.2 SSD can be removed or upgraded as well and you can even add a 2.5 inch SATA drive. Asus has equipped our review unit with an Intel Wireless AC9560 module which supports Bluetooth 5.0 and up to IEEE 802.11 AC for a maximum speed of 867Mbps. The LAN module is courtesy of Realtek and supports gigabit speeds as well. The Strix G lacks any sort of biometric unlock option and there's no fingerprint scanner or Windows Hello integration which makes the situation here look dated as you have to enter your PIN or password every time you unlock the device. Asus could have included a fingerprint scanner here as there's ample amount of space for it. 
Asus have packed in some seriously good speakers on the 6G, and the sound reproduction is great with ample amounts of detail, balance mids and highs, which contribute to some solid vocals and the overall volume is good as well. We expect Asus to use similar speakers on all their laptops, and there's also Sonic Studio software that helps you customize the listening experience to your liking. Our unit packs an Intel Core i5-9300H alongside NVIDIA GTX 1650 graphics and 8GB of RAM. The performance on this machine is really good as our test will show you. The i5-9300H is able to stay way above its base clock speed when stressed and it was able to maintain a solid 4.1GHz boost frequency during single thread of workload and a respectable 3.4GHz when all 8 threads were stressed out to run at 100% workload and it was able to score 850 plus on Cinebench R15 multi-core benchmark which is on par with the top performing machines with the same CPU. Coming to single thread of performance, the Strix scored an excellent 176 points which is on par with some desktop CPUs and will keep most gamers happy since it won't bottleneck the GTX 1650 inside. In our 10 point Cinebench R15 sustained multi-threaded test, the Strix G dropped 85 points and showed signs of thermal throttling initially but when you try the Intel XTU and undervolting the CPU by 120mV, there was a huge performance gain to be found and the throttling completely disappeared since the max CPU temperatures that reached up to 97 degrees stayed well below 85 degrees now alongside the gain in frequency but the clock speed never dipped below 3.8GHz on all cores compared to 3.4GHz before which is excellent for a fairly slim gaming laptop like the Strix G. We also run Geekbench 4 and here are the scores for your reference. Coming to the graphics performance, the GTX 1650 did well, outpacing the GTX 1050 Ti by a margin of 35% and only slightly behind the GTX 1060 6GB by 15% in 3D Mark Time Spy and Fire Strike, as you'll see in the graphs. This just shows how efficient Nvidia's Turing architecture really is. Gaming performance is decent on the Strix, you can expect frame rates of around 100 FPS and above in first person shooter games such as CSGO, running at high graphics setting at 1080p resolution and the average frame rate hovered around 110 FPS with a minimum of 85 FPS on CSGO. The overall gameplay was fairly smooth and we chose to play Deathmatch in the Dust 2 scene. More demanding and recent titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider could only maintain an average of 47 FPS during the in-game benchmark with minimum frame rate of 40 FPS and maximum of 85 FPS. The hardware is ideal for 1080p 60fps gaming with medium to high settings and we were hard pressed to find any flaws in the performance and even the fans at full speed were inaudible and were drowned out by the speakers themselves. Overall the gaming experience was very satisfying. Battery life on gaming laptops is generally lackluster and same is the case here during our testing of the laptop that lasted us no more than 4.5 hours on an average of 3 runs with the screen set to 50% brightness and workloads which mainly consisted of web browsing and media consumption. If you want good battery life then we'll recommend you to look elsewhere as a measly 48Wh battery on the laptop just can't keep up with the demanding hardware underneath. The Strix G comes with a 150W power brick which charges the laptop to full in about 1 hour and 45 minutes. There isn't any bloatware in the system apart from Asus Armory apps and McAfee antivirus. The Windows installation was pretty clean which is how most systems should come out of the box and we did only update the system especially the graphics driver to get the most performance out of the system. The ROG 6G performed exceptionally well and looks cool while doing it. We definitely recommend this laptop for a buy if you're a casual gamer with most of your usage being indoors. We definitely ask ASUS to pack in brighter panels on the future versions of this laptop as this is definitely a step in the right direction. We hope you liked this video, please do hit the subscribe button if you liked it. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next one.